Thank you. Thank you, Kian Corla. And can I start by welcoming Valerie and the visitors to the gallery to this evening's debate. So thank you for the opportunity this evening to again discuss this very important topic of CAMS and the recent Mental Health Commission interim report on the service. We all on the government side have listened most closely to the views and contributions expressed and will continue listening um, to Deputy Mitchell, uh, including those of the NGOs in the gallery. Today's motion is not being opposed as this government recognises the challenges that CAM services currently face and recognises the value of the findings highlighted by the Mental Health Commission interim report into CAMS. The findings of the interim report highlight important areas where services can be improved and act as a point from where proactive activity can benefit CAM services throughout the system. This government remains fully committed to the delivery of high quality, safe and compassionate mental health service for all, reflected through delivering our programme for government commitments for mental health. I therefore welcome the opportunity today to highlight the services and supports that are available for young people and their families experiencing mental health difficulties. And it is important for me and my colleagues, Minister Butler and Minister Donnelly and government as a whole, that young people are aware of the services that are available to them, as well as the work that is ongoing to improve CAMS services. The Mental Health Commission interim report is one of a number of reports and audits currently ongoing into CAMS. Between them, the reports and audits arising from the Maskey report, as well as the final report from the Commission, will serve to provide important information on how mental health services in this country can be improved. They will also provide an opportunity to highlight good practice throughout the system and provide the occasion to share from best practice. Nonetheless, as Ministers Donnelly and Minister Butler clearly indicated last Thursday evening, the findings in this interim report identify several issues which are simply not acceptable to anyone, including those providing CAM services. Importantly, Ministers Donnelly and Butler supported the Commission in carrying out their annual thematic report into CAMS. As they indicated in the Dáil statement last Thursday evening, the Government has accepted in full the recommendations of the Commission's interim report, and we await the final report of, on all nine CHOs and welcome the role the Commission plays in ensuring high standards of service provision in our mental health services. All areas of concern identified by the Commission in carrying out its interim report were escalated immediately to the HSE for immediate action and resolution, including the review of open patient cases which the HSE are undertaking. This will initially consist of a review of all open cases where the patient has been prescribed medication by their CAMS consultant or doctor and who has not been seen in the last six months by their CAMS team. In addition, the Department of Health will work with the HSE to immediately develop a model of care for prescribing practices in CAM services. This review of open cases will provide assurances that these children and young people are receiving appropriate care reflective of their current and future needs. The review will include a focus on physical health monitoring of those who are on medication. In relation to the interim report's recommendation for the regulation of CAMS, it should be recognised that the need to regulate CAM services was previously identified by the Department of Health and is built into the provisions of the upcoming revised Mental Health Bill. It will empathise with young people and their families who may be worried about receiving the care they deserve. Much work, good work is being done by our CAMS health professionals across the country and was raised in today's motion. It is appropriate to recognise their very strong commitment to vulnerable young people and their families. While we recognise the challenges and concerns in service provision in this area, it is important to note that the majority of young people who experience mental health difficulties have access to a variety of services and support. Of those who do seek care from CAMS teams, the vast majority also experience a positive outcome from CAMS in team terms of care and recovery. 
CAMS teams receive and triage nearly 21,000 referrals annually and deliver 225,000 appointments for children and young people requiring assessment and intervention each year. Between 2020 and 2021, CAM services have experienced a 33% increase in demand, while concurrently increasing their activity levels, seeing 21% more cases during that same period. There are currently 80 consultant psychiatrists in post working across the 73 teams. The HSE is continuously working to ensure all funded positions are filled and staffed are available to provide this important service. The HSE has a specific focus on supporting the recruitment and retention of staff with a focus on optimising team capacity. To this end, a new recruitment operational model is being implemented under the direction of the National Director of Human Resources in the HSE. There, were, there was reference once again last Thursday night to staffing levels against a vision for change recommendations. A vision for change was published in 2006. Sharing the vision sought to build on this experience and set out a more flexible approach to team development and staffing. This approach was taken to ensure that local CAM teams could be developed and staffed to best meet local circumstances and local service pressures. As not every CAMS team is identical, resources are put in place to make each team appropriate for its setting and best meet the patient's needs. I also reiterate that the new post of Youth Mental Health Lead at Assistant National Director level in the HSE and a new post of National Clinical Lead for Child and Youth Mental Health has been, have been announced with recruitment underway this week. We had a very intense and passionate debate here in the Chamber last Thursday night with positive contribution overall from all sides of the House. And I would at the outset like to remind all of the apt and welcome comments from the Kian Corla during that debate, which reflected a key point that Minister Butler too has always made as Minister for Mental Health and Older People. This is always to bear in mind that while any deficiencies in CAMS obviously need to be acknowledged and addressed insofar as possible, we must also be conscious of the sensitivities and the needs of those using CAMS. We as ministers and government are accepting of constructive criticism, but we are also at the same time need to offer reassurances to the public and instill confidence in the strong and important health service that are operating every day in this country. A balanced and evidence-based approach is always the best way we can collectively analyse concerns and follow in solutions we all seek. And I think at this point it's important just to correct the record that in CHO5 the total waiting is 314, but over 52 weeks there is 14. It just that earlier on it was said that there was 314 waiting over 52 weeks. It's actually 14 waiting over 52 weeks. Thank you. Real change in mental health has been underway over recent years and will continue through implementation of, currently, of current widely agreed policy sharing the vision. There is a record 1.2 billion allocation in 2023. This represents significant increased investment of some 220 million provided by this government since June 2020. Importantly, dedicated funding for CAMS is administered as part of the overall HSE mental health allocation each year. In addition, funding has been provided for two new CAMs, telehubs and a dedicated six million to expand the capacity of community mental health teams nationally, with particular emphasis on CAMs. The motion raised tonight does not appropriately reflect the significant investment in our mental health services, which I have already addressed this evening. I will also highlight the emphasis that this government has placed on improving accessibility to mental health services for young people. Continued investment in community service continues continues to be prioritised. Over £80 million in funding was provided to community-based organisations in 2022, who also provide important early intervention services. Early intervention services are a strong stable of mental health services for young people and provide an essential point of access to supports for those in distress and ex are experiencing mental health difficulties. And this £80 million in funding is provided to a wide array of service providers, often funded through the HSE. 
However, for those who do not need access to the specialist support and services that camps provide, it is acknowledged that children and their families can experience varying waiting times. 93% of current referrals to CAM service are responded to within three days. Steps are also being taken to actively reduce waiting times. And I, at this stage, I think I will leave it to Minister Butler to conclude.